I, this is just going to be a brief video, uh, just a little bit, something for Ukrainian Rada, for Zelensky, for Ukraine. Uh, a bit uh, confusing, the, the news that we read is coming out from Ukraine, it's, uh, it's interesting because there's a, there's a news here right now, I see Zelensky cancelled China as a mediator. I don't know how China could be a mediator of Ukraine. China cannot be a mediator of any kind. A, a peace plan China proposed, Russia cheered to that peace plan. And frankly, if there was a peace of any kind and uh, China had access to, to any kind of peace plan in Ukraine, uh, Ukrainian people obviously they no longer would exist in the part of Ukraine that would uh, that a Chinese peace plan would pertain to uh, obviously Ukrainian Ukrainians to whichever part of Ukraine a Chinese peace plan would pertain to would cease to exist there there is absolutely no doubt there would be systematic extermination procedure for the sake of bigger Russia that would take place. Actually, not for the bigger Russia, for the sake of some kind of revolution that China waged together with Russia, not only on Ukraine, but against the Europe, against the United States, against the NATO, against the West. You know, they believe in some kind of revolution, something. Uh, and the best proof about that is, is a nuclear option that China offered to a Belarus state uh, in support of Lukashenko regime in Belarus, in support of Putin in Belarus also. Uh, I don't think that's the China at present is option of any kind. China would do best if China would at least save itself from the gates of hell uh, which Russia is proposing for the world and obviously the world will reject is rejecting this and will reject for the hell for the hell of it if it's necessary to make Russia understand that uh, Russia is not even an option as it is for the world it's totally not acceptable in absolutely any way. Um, a good news, Zelensky rejected China as a mediator. However, damage was done. Damage was done. Uh, Taiwan had a conference. They had a security conference a few days ago. And when you address China as somebody that would go and mediate uh, as a peacekeeper, as a somebody with a peace plan uh, in Ukraine, you being literally given a privilege by the NATO states to be seen, and talking about Ukraine, to be seen as somebody against whom China uh, is a war enabler. It's an enormous privilege. So I don't understand from Ukrainian side how you sent Kuleba to China during issues that pertain also to Taiwan, you see, because this is one thing, it's called NATO alliance, and Taiwan is just part of that alliance. Taiwan is American ally, is a Western ally, and just like Ukraine must be defended for whatever it takes. I regret Chinese decision to send military to Belarus.
because you know for an obvious reason uh, now you want to change you want to wage war uh, on Europe from Belarus uh, be my guest but Taiwan did not attack or threaten China uh, in absolutely any way NATO did not go and threaten China with a uh, with nukes, with a war in China or something like that through the Taiwan uh, and I see a Chinese steps especially due to economic uh, and also military technical support for the Russia is totally necessary, unnecessary it's not a response to any threat from the West but it's obviously as I stated earlier it's some form of revolution or something like that, a revolutionary act that China waged against uh, West uh, for the sake of Russia. Um, as far as I see here that the third of Ukrainians would give up land for the peace, but it's not as simple as that. No, uh, I'm going to say to you like this, uh, Kuleba was a big, big, big mistake. I am truly glad that uh, Zelensky came to realize that China is not a viable option for Ukraine as it is. This is just not how the things work. Uh, a peace plan for Ukraine, Chinese peace plan for Ukraine, this would be like you want to decapitate Ukraine. They also waged some kind of uh, war games, right? China and Russia also waged some kind of a war games and stuff like this. You know, you don't, you don't want to be visiting China. You don't want to be doing any of that stuff. This is, this is not an option. I'm going to say to something to Ukraine. Your job is to be whatever NATO needs you. And the NATO right now needs you to defend Ukraine foremost. They don't need you anywhere else. They need you to supply you with a weaponry, just like you need them to supply you with a weaponry. And uh, you need to defend your dear motherland so that you have homes over your heads, your country, future of some kind, your country, your independence. It's for you now that... Uh, you have to think about and the people that uh, come up with uh, certain issues that uh, pertain to your uh, security uh, you have to unselect them you have to take them out you have to find an alternative to it you cannot uh, afford yourself to support politicians that uh, are doing stuff like this this is a fucking wreck it's a wreck it's a reckless stuff that places at stake uh, alliance between Ukraine and NATO. Uh, you don't have to be inside of NATO to get uh, assistance from the NATO. You don't have to be a member, NATO member state to get assistance from the NATO. Because NATO is a mentality. With the proper mindset, with the proper mentality, you will get the support from the NATO. You will get more support from the NATO than Many countries should, and they never did, because in some cases, NATO did not even exist. And I'm going to use the case of uh, a certain country today to give you Ukrainians an uh, idea about what kind of mindset do you have to have to survive this war. This is the war that is, goes on everything or nothing. I don't understand what it says here that there is a you see and then the next thing that comes out is this is from the news the collab created with his visit in China is the one third of Ukrainians would give up the land for peace and so on and so forth man uh, wow it really really made me upset I don't like the news like this I uh, I was afraid of the news like this. I was really, really afraid of the news like this. 
I was afraid of the news like this. I mean, this is like the biggest honor that Ukraine got, you know. The NATO, NATO all our allies call China. China is a giant country. Just imagine what a global player is. This is one of the major players. One of the main and major players in the world. This may be second or third player in the world. Economic player in the world. And you have a NATO countries accusing one of being an enabler of Russian war in Ukraine. This is a big plus for, for Ukraine. You don't need to go and spoil this stuff. You don't need to go and spoil this stuff. A politicians like this must go. Kuleba, you gotta go. You gotta, you gotta pack up your stuff and go, man. There's no place for people like you anywhere. Here I see something I left you. This is the sign that should be posted at the entrance to your uh, Rada in Ukraine, in Kiev. This is the sign you should have inside at the entrance. Big fucking sign like this. So that every fucking day you enter. You know where you go? I don't know if you click the cards, the time cards, where you come in the morning to report yourself for the job or whatever you do. You should also have one sign like this. You know what it says on the sign? No man left behind. No man left behind. This, this should be your mindset in Ukraine. So I don't know. I don't know anything about when I see the sign like this, when I see this stuff here, that one, one third of Ukrainians, they would give up a land for peace. Let me explain to you something. All right. Let me explain to you something. It's like this. It's really simple. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Three days. The three days... You work to pay your bills, your job, three days, 24 hours on a weekday. This is what you're supposed to work to pay for your bills. Friday and uh, Thursday and Friday, you know, you're supposed to work for the men on the front lines because the war is not only in the front lines, the war is also in the rear. That's where you go and whatever it takes you do, uniforms, technical support, medications, whatever, wherever it takes, and also money and whatever it takes for them, for their families. This is the way it works. Saturday and Sunday, you men, especially that you are between, I don't know, age 18 and 50, you should be exercising. Also, you with the ladies, if they want to serve, if they want to assist, you should be ongoingly practicing with the Ukrainian military the skills that are required to keep the front line running as efficient as possible as a matter of fact so that you're best of ukraine that's why also i stated no man left behind can also get a rest they can also be replaced uh, or you know when they do their stuff they go home or whatever they do or they do others other stuff or they train more people and so on so they can be lighter pressure in the front line so they can be more efficient so they can more concentrate on details and do better and become more efficient you should do by now if you're working like a good machinery like a good team like a machinery like a machinery team your mindset in ukraine should be indifferent from the one in finland You know, in Finland, you said to me that one third of Ukrainians would give up the land. These are not Ukrainians. Every Ukrainian knows that the person that would give up the cream, Crimea, or eastern part of Ukraine is not Ukrainian because there is no Ukraine without Crimea and without the Donetsk, without the eastern part of Ukraine. If you went to the Finland, if you were in Finland, and during the winter war you come in the face of none of these guys here that you see no no as a finnish person no 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 you have to watch a little bit what went behind behind the behind the front lines about the women uh, how they prepared how they worked night and day for their men who fought on the front line and then you will understand what it means to be 
uh, in that case was a Finnish and in your case that's Ukrainian they would not fucking tolerate no fucking Finnish people that would give up uh, a centimeter of their Finland if you were a, fin a Finnish and you wanted to give up a piece of land they fucking terminate you man you better fucking go to some other country maybe to Russia or some other place Russia is huge Russia is big Russia's have Russia have enough place for the traitors they will accommodate you if you feel that you want to give the land do you want to give up on it then Ukraine is not the right place for you then Ukraine is not the right place for you this here this is the sign that needs to be placed inside of the Rada at the entrance to Rada and it also needs to be placed where you where you take your cards every morning where you go Stempel Kartica uh, you know I don't know how you say that but the time cards where you where you do like you you come to work and you usually have that at the, at the entrance that you you click your card or whatever you report yourself for the job whatever uh, this this sign also this sign needs to be placed over there so that when you come to work did you understand no leave no man behind principle no man left behind did you understand what the fuck it means because the more of the stuff I told you today in this video you're gonna do the more you will understand this principle here the more you will be Ukrainian that's all there is uh, this is a good decision. This is a very, very good decision that Zelensky made today. Uh, I like the decision that uh, there will be no no peace plan. Chinese peace plan is a Russian peace plan. I don't understand uh, how how can you even how can you even uh, talk about something like this as a, as a, as an option of any kind. It's disturbing. This shit is disturbing but when you talk about the stuff like this when you talk about even given an option of something like this you are suggesting uh, surrender you are suggesting that you know you are corrupting the attitude of the people and i don't like the politicians that are corrupting the attitude of the people so i think i'm afraid zelensky you also need to go it's a good decision you have made tonight but it's enough that you dare to cross in the waters like this that you actually see the doubt in the mind of Ukrainian people so I think man I think you need to go I don't like your attitude I didn't like your attitude you had a very very soft attitude uh, Ukrainians need individual who will be a NATO individual who will be unconditionally surrendered to the principles of the NATO because NATO will support Ukraine for as long as they will see the interest in it and it's a mindset the NATO is a mindset they will support as long as they see that there is a will there is an unconditional will for Ukraine they will support it and if they see news like this appearing uh, it can collapse within within a single day the whole fucking thing and you did this by the way when they started to offer fighter jets and stuff like that uh, in a very very critical moment you were not also not critical enough toward NATO before when you needed the weaponry when you needed this stuff and you were not critical enough you were not frank about enough about how much equipment you got all that stuff so unless that was a plan that you coordinated with the NATO uh, you know here I'm gonna stop I'm gonna draw the line here I'm not gonna go any further let this uh, this stuff here I am horrified I don't know what to think about I am I'm totally totally horrified with this stuff I am I'm really really afraid to even think about what goes right now uh, in heads 
of the NATO bosses. This is what I'm really, really afraid of. That's crazy. That is fucking crazy. Um, Ukraine is a NATO. If somebody asks you, where are you coming from? You tell them, I'm from the NATO. Uh, anything less is a catastrophe you will regret. I don't even dare to think about what uh, what this what, what why would you why why would you even want to go and, and associate with the Xi Jinping right now? I mean, you know why why don't you just let uh, NATO bosses handle this issue instead? Okay, uh, let let uh, let the Xi Jinping sit with the with the Stoltenberg with the Jens Stoltenberg in. Let Jens Stoltenberg to act in the name of Ukraine. This is very serious advice I'm giving you right now. Um, I know that you have to have some kind of uh, Ukrainian politic, is what Kuleba told me, and also Zelensky. What they, they were asking me, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Well, I, I told you exactly what I know. I, I don't think. I told you exactly what I know. Yeah? Get down and do your job. Because people are dying on the front line. And that there is a quarter of Ukraine that needs to be liberated. So there is a job to do. There is a job to be done. So uh, it, uh, it angers me. It angers me. I, I don't even know how I would explain about one more time, look at this picture. You see this picture here? If you don't know, I recommend you watch the movie Winter War, Finland. The way they fought the war in the Finland. And uh, with the principle I demonstrated you here, with this kind of principle, no man left behind, you will have absolutely no problem understanding this issue here. The more the stuff you will do, I explain to you in this video, the less you're going to have a problem that will concern the people that would give up the land for the peace. I don't need no fucking people like this in Ukraine. No Ukrainian needs people like this. To the fuck with the people like this. These are not people.